Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Matt, I'm a junior doctor working in London. And if you've been staying in contact with me, uh, you'll know that I recently got COVID. So I've been speaking to quite a few of you on Twitter and Instagram. And one of the things I wanted to do was put content out that people would be able to learn from or benefit from in some way or form. And a few of you guys suggested that I make a video about the symptoms that people look out for in terms of common ones, unusual ones, and concerning ones. And just in general, how I cope with COVID and what I do at home to keep myself healthy. So I thought I would do all that in this video here. These are just pieces of advice and opinions I wanted to share with you guys to do what I can for you. However, it is not professional medical advice by any means. Although I am a practicing doctor, anything I say on these channels cannot be used as medical advice. So for those purposes, if you require any urgent medical attention or you're really concerned about your health, I would urge you to get in touch with your local care provider, your GP, or go to your nearest accident and emergency department to get some help. So today is day six. Um, how am I doing? Uh, it's been up and down. Mostly I've been quite lucky in terms of my symptoms being fairly mild and I am able to maintain general function and well-being. It started sort of from day one with fevers, headaches, nausea, developed into sort of um, shortness of breath when I would walk out to the kitchen or when I would just go about sort of walking around or taking deep breaths. I built up a cough in the next few days, which has gotten worse, I think. It's probably the worst it's been today. I've had a few episodes of diarrhea and I have had a gradual development in my loss of taste and smell. It's the weirdest feeling not being able to taste something because when you are seeing a piece of food and you're visualizing it in your head, you know exactly what it's gonna taste like and your mind has this expectation that you give yourself when you're putting it into your mouth and chewing. The texture you can appreciate, but you can't really taste anything, or at least I can't um, taste anything from the taste buds on my tongue. I can sort of tell a little bit in terms of the taste, whether it's bitter or acidic or sour or spicy, um, but that's pretty much about it. And it's, it's a very weird sensation. So I just wanted to go through sort of the typical symptoms that you see in COVID and what to look out for, as well as maybe touch on one or two of the unusual symptoms and the red flag symptoms. So typical symptoms are things such as shortness of breath, most commonly on exertion. People can have quite a high fever, a dry, non-productive cough. So what it was like for me and what it's like for quite a lot of people is that it's a niggling sort of feeling in the back of the throat that you just want to clear it. Uh, every so often and that's quite a typical presentation for COVID. Change in your sense of taste and smell, general fatigue so some people can be very tired. A lot of people can also have muscle aches as well. However as I mentioned previously every single person experiences it slightly differently so it does vary in terms of symptoms in one person compared to another. There are a few unusual symptoms and when I say unusual I just mean not typically associated with as high of a portion of the population that get COVID-19 however are still seen in a number of people with it and these are things such as diarrhea, sore throats, flu-like symptoms of runny nose and constant sneezing, a migraine-like headache, and some people can also get rashes appearing on the various parts of your body. The last set of symptoms I wanted to touch upon very quickly are red flag symptoms. And this is a term quite commonly used in medicine when we're talking about any condition or presentation or disease, which is essentially a list of things that we need to look out for because they will likely warrant urgent medical attention. And these are things such as a really, really high temperature, when you become very breathless or dizzy or you're feeling very faint or losing consciousness, just in terms of COVID, that your oxygen saturation levels are a little low. If you're feeling really, really short of breath, even when you're lying in bed at rest, that's another red flag symptom that needs to be checked out. The bottom line is that if you're in any doubt, asshole, it's definitely worth speaking to a proper medical professional and seeking help, calling 111 or going into hospital a &E. So with all that being said, we know a bit more about COVID, but what can we do about it to keep ourselves healthy? So there are quite a few things that you can do and most of them are actually fairly simple measures, but it's just a matter of being a bit more careful and making sure you're taking care of yourself properly. 
The first thing that I want to give is just general advice about health and well-being. And this actually not only goes out for people who are ill and unwell with COVID, but also just keeping yourself healthy on a normal basis. And this is things like keeping hydrated, making sure you have a balanced diet with fruit and vegetables that have all your vitamins and minerals in them, but also supplying your body with the adequate calories to keep it going. The thing about normal diets is that actually a lot of us aren't getting a lot of the nutritional intake that our body requires, which is why I take, um, let me just go get it actually, take a nutritional supplement with all the vitamins, uh, vitamin A, D, E, K, C, uh, B6, B12, folic acid, calcium, zinc, all, all this stuff basically. I take this every day just as a top up in addition to the meals that I have just to make sure that I'm capping out at my requirements. I was doing this even before COVID and one important benefit is that it will just keep your immune system strong because obviously the immune system and the cell regeneration process takes a lot of different vitamins. There has been evidence recently coming out about various other supplements like melatonin and vitamin D. I'm not well versed enough in the most recent research to give specific advice or give my opinion regarding those things. And I would say that before considering any of these products, you should definitely have a look at the most recent evidence or recommendations from things like the FDA. Uh, other simple interventions that you can have are keeping your symptoms in check with things such as paracetamol and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen, which essentially just work to dampen down your immune system response um, for symptoms like fevers, which will hopefully make you feel better. Things you can check at home, which are just fairly simple observations that we do on a regular basis in the hospital, or just taking a set of your observations. Three things that I recommend checking are the heart rate, the blood oxygen saturations, and your respiratory rate. When your body is in a state of shock or anxiety or high stress loads or infection, you'll see a natural response or change in these observations because your body is working harder Checking your saturations, you'll need a oxygen probe. You can buy one fairly easily on Amazon and they're usually quite accessible and cheap. Will give you an indication of your blood oxygen saturation levels and also usually give you an indication of your heart rate as well. The general levels that we accept in hospitals and also outside of it is a blood oxygen saturation of over at least 94%. But this does vary depending on if you have other medical conditions. But I'm not going to go into this because as I said, this isn't professional medical advice. And if you're worried about any discrepancies of sorts, you should definitely seek medical advice. What it is good for though is as a general screening tool and seeing if it's above 94% because that means that your body is coping with the load of whatever's happening in your lungs and your body. If you do decide to pick one up, I'd recommend just reading around it because there are a few things that you need to be careful of, such as nail polish and such, uh, influencing the results of the readings. So definitely have a look on there, but I would say it's a good investment. Moving on to your heart rate, there are three easy ways to measure this. The first one is through the saturations probe, although if you have an irregular heart rate, that won't necessarily be accurate. The two other locations you can also feel for your heart rate are down here on your left side where your heart is situated. If you just sort of feel your way down just below your nipple, you'll feel a general heartbeat and you can hone in on that specific location that it's loudest. And you can count for 15 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute how many times it's beating to give you a heart rate in beats per minute. You can also feel for your heart rate in the radial artery, which is found in the arm. Generally, a body responding stress would be anything above 100 beats per minute. However, you do need to be careful because when you're counting, your heart rate tends to go up anyways. The last thing that you can just keep an eye on is your breathing and whether that's deep or shallow and whether you're having difficulty breathing. I just wanted to mention two techniques that I've been using at home to keep my lung and body active. It's really just simple techniques that you can do no matter where you are or what position that you're in. The first thing is just working on my breathing and taking deep breaths in and out to see whether I'm able to do that and whether it's painful or whether there's any limitations. Every morning when I wake up, I like to just sort of sit there for a little bit. And I do it in the form of meditation where I will close my eyes and just take some deep breaths in and out, focus on my breathing and see how my body's responding to it, see whether I'm struggling or how I feel with that. The second thing that I do is just simple exercise. And this can be anything ranging from just walking on the spot for a couple minutes to doing squats, to just walking up and down stairs, to even just walking out to the living room. It's really just uh, keeping yourself active. That's the main important thing. 
but obviously be sensible about it. Don't keep working out until you feel dizzy or pass out. And finally, the last thing that I just wanted to touch on, but probably is one of the most important as well, is to not forget your daily dose of a mental health booster. It can be really difficult while you're alone, unwell, in isolation, but what does really help is doing something that you love or speaking to someone that you love, like a close friend or family or even an acquaintance of yours. I think that human connection makes a huge difference, especially when you're not feeling well, uh, just knowing that someone is there for you psychologically is a huge reassurance when you're unwell. While I've been here in isolation, I've had so many friends and family and new acquaintances reach out to me just with really nice messages just to see how I was doing. I've spent some time catching up with old friends and family, which has been really lovely. And I know that that's probably the most important thing that's helped me get over my illness so far. So if you're watching this and you know a friend or a family member who is currently sick with or without COVID-19, even just normal illness, this is my prescription to you. Reach out to them, say hello, see how they're doing and just be there for them. It can make a world of a difference to them and you never know what impact you'll have. So guys, that is it from me. But if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to send it to a few friends or family members who might also find this useful. I'll be making a few more videos on my COVID experience. So definitely subscribe to see more like this. But otherwise, for now, that is it. And I will see you guys in my next video.